What's up, nerds? We're your hosts this week. I'm Jake. I am Chad. This week, we are sponsored by Ray's Energy Drinks. We are also sponsored by Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. Hot Sauce. Uh, this week, we'll be talking uh, more about She-Hulk in the latest episode, now streaming on Disney+. Plus. We will also be talking about House of the Dragon, now streaming on HBO Max. And let's get into it. This is the All Things Nerd Podcast. Welcome back, nerds, to the All Things Nerd podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. Jake, how was your week? It's been better. My week is, technically my week has been fine. I went golfing on Friday. Uh, I did not do great, as you know. I told you all about it. Um, And my washing machine, our washing, my girlfriend and I's washing machine, uh, died on us, and we had to go get a new one. I enlisted your help to help me carry it out and bring the new one in. That old one was a bitch. It was heavy, dude. I'm telling you, it was crazy. It was heavy I did... and wide. We had to take the door yeah. off to get it out yeah. of the house. Yeah. I was like, hold it. I remember it because I was holding it while you were unscrewing the door. Yeah, that was... It was bad. The, yeah. new, the was... new one was very light and very easy. <laughs> yeah. Stick into those from here on out. <laughs> they all the old one had right? like a touch screen and fancy bullshit. Down with those. Yeah. Lame. You don't need that. No. It just... washes clothes the same. Yeah. Just turn it on. Do your job. That's all I care about. <laughs> How was your week, Chadley? Well, I helped a friend move a washing machine. <laughs> he sounds like a real asshole. <laughs> 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 Uh, and other than that, I mean, I went golfing on Sunday. It was it was an event. I don't want to get into it, but I did get my first ever uh, par on a par five, which was pretty awesome. Um, oh. Missed a couple opportunities for for some birdies, but parred more than I thought I would. Uh, I can say the fact it was my third time out in three years. My uh, my first par on a par five was the first time I ever went golfing with yeah, you. Yeah, and it pissed me off because I did not <laughs> par that hole, and I had not parred a par five <laughs> up to that point. That was dumb. I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> there um, is some news. Yeah. Do you want to start with what we are doing or with... Uh, some announcements from Marvel and con- confirmations. I think, uh, so I don't have the updated one in front of me, so I'll, I'll just kind of kick it off and then I'll just kind of let you run through it. Yeah. Um, one of the big things we know is that, and you can stop me if I'm talking about the wrong part, because like I said, I don't have the updated one, but no more in... Well, or Wakanda 2, Woo. Uh, Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, uh, is officially uh, mutant. Which is awesome. That's, that's huge. Yeah. They've been hinting at it very subtly for a while that they were going to bring mutants in. And uh, uh, I forget, Tanak Huerta, I don't know if I said that right. Yeah, I don't know. I forgot to I forgot <laughs> to add that to the, <laughs> the notes to make sure we said that right. The actor playing Namor, I believe, he, correct us if we're wrong here, I believe his name is Tanakh uh, Huerta, um, came out and said that Namor is officially a mutant. So, mutants exist. Sorry, what? I just hear your dog going to town in the background on her Kong. <laughs> Can you really hear it? <laughs> just slopping. Lame. Just yeah. Did you say Kong or Dong? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, why don't you talk about the, the other MCU news that's in those notes? Because those are the correct ones. And then I can talk about our collaboration. I don't have those notes in front of me. About the hey, monsters? Literally. It's the, the two words before uh, Namor's name? Nope. You got, you got Battle of the Sketches there and which was last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, dumb. I'm dumb. I got it. 
<laughs> it's mi- it's mixed with last week's episode. I know. For some I yeah. I messed up. I sent you like half finished notes. <laughs> you set me up for doing it on purpose. You're trying to undermine me. Um, no, the the is uh, actually really cool news is that uh, with the release of um, Werewolf by Night coming out October seventh on Disney Plus. Uh, we also got confirmation that they're going to continue the monster verse in the Marvel realm, which is awesome. Yeah. Which we knew that they were going to do that because of Blade and, you know, yeah. Midnight Suns, Ghost Rider, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But uh, I think they mean more like the actual monsters, like Dracula and shit like that, which is pretty cool. That is super awesome. I'm really excited for it. Yeah. Um, they said that there's going to be Easter eggs throughout. Uh, werewolf by night of like different monsters like pasted on the walls whether it's like taxidermy like trophies mm-hmm. or just like wanted posters stuff like that um, basically showing that the hunters that will get in werewolf by night have been around a long time hunting these supernatural beings mm-hmm. and that we're going to see more of them in the future which is awesome wait 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 <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, brings in Dracula pretty easily. <laughs> I'm so stoked for this show. Yeah. It's going to be great. Or, it's not a show. It's a one hour long event. Yeah, it's like That's a, it. a yeah. short. Yeah. Kind of. I, I thought it was a show, and I keep saying it's a show. It's not a show. Yeah. On top of that, we show. can tell you... <laughs> <laughs> we can tell you a little bit more about our collaboration that we're doing with a bunch of incredibly talented uh, independent artists uh, with uh, like Bernard Chang, Jerry Ma, Ken Knudsen. Two of those three names probably sound very familiar. Uh, they've been on the shows. Bernard Chang is also an incredible artist who has worked for DC and Marvel. We'd love to have him on the show. Uh, we, I think... I think he might be on one of these weeks. Don't quote oh, me on that. On I have to double check. <laughs> Don't quote me. Um, if he's not, we'll have to get him on afterwards. <laughs> uh, but so we're partnering with uh, the, it's a weekly thing that all these indie artists do called battle of the sketches. There's a theme for each week. All these artists make sketches based off of it. They showcase their work. It's an awesome community, just uplifting a bunch of awesome artists. And we're going to be partnering with them. Uh, For the month of October, we picked all of the themes. We're hosting this month, basically. Yeah. And we're also going to... That month, October. Yeah, October, this uh, upcoming month. There will be some... We'll have an online gallery on our website where you can purchase some of these originals um, where, you know, some of the money will go to the artist and then it's going to be like a 50, 50 split. Um, Some of the money will go to the artist. Some will go to uh, a local comic book shop here in the twin cities where Jake and I are located. And then in the month of December, we'll be doing giveaways for those. Uh, We're going to buy a bunch of gift cards So no matter where you are, especially domestically in the States, uh, they will accept the the gift cards to purchase stuff from them and ship it to them. But you'll have a chance to win um, some gift cards to a local shop. It's going to be awesome. We're super excited. I'm a terrible artist. I'm going to try. I was going to say, we're also participating. Yeah. Yeah. Jake is a talented artist, so he'll be... uh, well, I think your work is good. I have a sneak peek. I don't know if it'll show up with my camera. I'm not anywhere near done. Can you see jack hey, shit? That Fuck is off. A, that is a oh, white. Oh, oh, oh. There, there you go. kind of see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's it. Yeah, it's going to... The first week is werewolves, but we did it in inspiration of Werewolf by Night coming out. It's going to be fun. I'm really excited each week. Uh, for the month of October, we're going to have some of these artists on to talk to them about their inspiration, their drawing styles. And, you know, if it's something that they do full time or if it's something that they do on the side, uh, it'll be a good mix. We're really excited. We're going to have, uh, I mean, Ken Newton's coming back for, for one of the weeks. So you'll get to see his wonderful face again. 
Uh, he's the artist of my artist and writer of my monkey's name is Jennifer. Oh, mine's behind me. It's right there. <laughs> so we'll have him back on the show. Um, it's it's going to be a good time. We're really excited. And so stay tuned for the month of October. There's going to be some cool people, some cool art. And like I said, on our website, there's going to be an online gallery where you can support these artists and also get a chance to win some art uh, or some comics, gift cards. If you support the artist, you get the print. That's how it goes. Um, Okay, we talked long enough. Tell them about the first sponsor, Jake. Our first sponsor, damn it. Our first sponsor is... uh... Ray. <laughs> Shit! I always do cry baby Greg's. I, I, I screw that's myself I up. Just... Leave it in, leave it in. Our first I'm sponsor is Ray's Energy Drinks. They know I fuck up a lot. Uh, our first sponsor is Ray's Energy Drinks. It's uh, zero calories, zero sugar, zero crash. It's fantastic energy drink. Um, they make other things like pancakes, which is wild. Uh, cake in a cup that you just throw in the microwave. I mean, there's a ton of shit that they do. It's all really, really fucking good. Um, listen up, and we'll tell you more about it. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy, an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful yet sustained energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time and powered by their refresh formula technology, Ray's Energy delivers a performance-enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, Every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout for 15% off your order. Or if you don't know what you want, go ahead and click the link that's in the description for, to get a $50 sample pack for free. All you do is you cover the cost of shipping. Again, make sure you use promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout to let them know that we sent you. All right, everyone. So we are going to continue talking about She-Hulk on Disney Plus with this week's episode of Episode 6. Uh, before we get started, uh, spoiler alert. Because that's what we do. Uh, before we get into it, Jake, how are you liking the show? Uh, all right. So I expressed this last week, and I'll just briefly touch on it again. I am enjoying the show. I think it's very funny. I think it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, the plot has been lacking quite a bit for me. It has been a bit slow to get going. And there's only three episodes left, so it's like, come on. Do something. <laughs> yeah. Just poke it with a stick. <laughs> um, I agree. I do. I really enjoy that it's from a much more, like, human side of the MCU, like, seeing what life around this is. Mm. But I agree. I kind of want something to happen. Yeah. I mean, Which I get, like... Incredible, I guess. I didn't get, like, two or three episodes being, like, you know, we're building up to it. But the show's two, two-thirds of the way over. Like, yeah. we, give give us something. Come on. Like, you haven't given us the only, like, action sequences we've had so far is a very, like, brotherly sister fight between Hulks and then... Titania, which we'll get into in a minute here, but it was. And she pretty fought much... some demons with Wong, but it was like a couple of minutes, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I think that it's building, and we'll get to that, like you said, in a second. Um, according to our Daredevil Watch, the official Daredevil Watch, still nada. 
This is kind of like a very self-contained wedding episode until you kind of mm. get to the end. Um, I mean, there is stuff going on at GLK and H, the the law firm. You know, Nikki the paralegal teaming up with. Uh, oh, I did not write her name down. The lawyer that helped Jennifer Walters beat her lawsuit against Titania oh, last shit. week. Yeah. Um, that was, it was fun, but it was more just like time filler, but there was also some Easter eggs because they were representing Mr. Immortal. Yeah. Which is kind of cool for like a C-list Marvel character. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did lead the Midwest, or sorry, the Great Lakes Avengers. (laughs) <laughs> uh, but they made him a silver fox age a total, total he wore, wore an ascot just a womanizer they made him a douche yeah. which is he's kind of a douche in, in the company yeah they just aged him up a bit which is weird because yeah. he's immortal yeah. basically he just can't die so he'll Instead of getting proper divorces from his slew of <laughs> wives, he'll just kill himself. To end their marriage agreement, and then he comes back to life and is like, technically, yeah. I died till death do us part. No longer you know? married. Yeah. So that it is funny. Yeah, you know, it is funny. He's had like a jazz-themed wedding, or not wedding, funeral. Um mm that Nikki wants desperately wants pictures of. Um, but he does mention his first wife. And who is that? You kind of threw it out in the, the intro because you were... I remember her last name is Cromwell. I can't find it in the... Bar- Baroness Cromwell. Baroness Cromwell, yeah. And she is uh, very much like a vampire in the comics, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh especially now that we're leading into werewolf by night um, and getting into the spooky side of Marvel, which is cool. So I don't know. I think it was a cool like name drop. They didn't really like nobody like perked up when they said that name or anything like that. They just kind of name dropped it. And if you know, you know, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nikki also comes across uh, a site called intelligentsia oh yeah yeah which is kind of cool it's a nod to the comics right now what we know of intelligentsia it's kind of like a QAnon website which i'm sure for some proud boys uh Mm -hmm. they were like yes conspiracy theories the government work um but from the comics, Intelligentsia is kind of like an underground organization. Uh, Hating on women. And I'm not going to say it. I can't say it. Skin tone. Um, thank you. Thank you for that <laughs> that approving nod, Jake. Uh, it is. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's very much one of those skeevy websites. Um, but in the comics, Intelligentsia is an organization that is run by both Modoc and the leader. And we know that we're getting both of those coming soon. up soon. Yeah. Uh, and by soon, we mean next year or two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Quantumania, does that close out phase four or is that the start of phase five? Uh, no, that doesn't. That leads into King Dynasty. But we're getting that, like, February of next year in King Dynasty and... Uh... That's, still, that's still Phase 4, though. So it's the end of Phase 4, because King Dynasty and stuff like that is Phase 6. Is it? Yeah. Cause I gotta look we, at the calendar. We get a yeah. lot of shows and, like... Quantumania might close it out then. Yeah. Because they are uh, Feige said that uh, Quantumania directly leads to... Yeah, um, to the events of Kang Dynasty. Yeah. yeah. 
But so we get Modoc like nods through the intelligentsia and then also mm-hmm. the leader, which we know will for sure be one of the main villains of uh Captain America New World Order. Uh the leader is Samuel Stearns, played by uh, Blake Nelson. Nelson. There was another. He goes by three names. I could like not. Blake T. Nelson or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Blake Tim Nelson. Tim Nelson. Yeah. Tim Blake Nelson. Nelson Blake Tim. Nelson Tim Blake. Yes. <laughs> All of those. Uh, who we saw? Hey, it's in... Blake T. Nelson. Yeah. We already said that. Yeah. I. You said all of them. <laughs> you said all the options. Uh, but we saw him as Samuel Stearns in The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. Mm-hmm. Um, Taking some uh, incredible comb drips to the forehead. And just the straight money shot. You know? Yeah. Just yeah. Like, oh. mm. Sorry, Mark. Mm. Uh <laughs> But so that's he kind was of, smiling while it was happening because he felt his brain start he, to grow. He, he was smart, you know, smart, smart. Uh, but that kind of like takes care of the the side story, like the law side of things for this episode. Uh, Jennifer Walters goes to her friend's wedding in in a She Hulk made for her dress um she shows up at she hulk she's all like ready to mingle and party and have fun and her friend who is just the worst uh i thought she was so i get it i get it though they paired her to walk down the aisle with a decrepit geriatric chihuahua no, 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 okay, that part is bullshit. But I meant, like, the part where she's like, hey, like, I don't want no, you to be no She-Hulk, She-Hulk at my wedding. I Because, like, part the too. bride is supposed to be the, you know, even though I think weddings are horseshit, but... This wedding? I didn't want I think salmon. Weddings in I general, I times. think, are horseshit. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Locking, locking myself in this... A very small room with a dog who farts a lot was a very bad idea. <laughs> it is rotten. Well, let's try and get through <laughs> this section and then you can figure that out. So sorry. I don't care. I don't She's care a farty either. dog. I'll, fl- I'll flip this table over right now. Into the wall. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, her friend basically tells her, hey, I don't, I don't want you to be she hulk at the wedding like i can you not do it please promise me you won't do it and she's like yeah totally no hulking out at the wedding yeah so she's jen for most of the episode then because of that uh she does meet a starry-eyed lover who takes interest to her as jen you have speculations i think all right here's the thing I'll go through it fast. I think he's a bad guy. I think he's working with whoever, and we'll get to the ending of this episode, and it'll make a little more sense. But I think he's working with whoever tried to jump Jen in the street a few episodes ago. And then she was like, oh, yeah, I'm She-Hulk. And she bulks up, and the they aren't able to get a stab at her to take her blood, which is what they were after, we assume. Uh, and so this guy... So the last episode, she had a very public trial, basically. And all of the guys that were interested in her were only interested in her as She-Hulk, not as Jen for Walters. In this episode, literally the next episode, this guy, very good-looking man, is, like, super interested in Jen, not She-Hulk. I mean, he's in, you know, like, all of it. He's interested in all of it, but he's like, I like you the way that you are. And like blah, 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 and it's like a little too good to be true. Um, and the reason I think this is is because that ne- the needle that they tried to use on her a few episodes ago, as She-Hulk, they can't penetrate her skin, so they can't get the blood out. But as Jennifer Walters, they can. 
And I think that they are trying to get this guy to get close to her as Jennifer Walters so that she's not hulked out and he's going to stick a needle in her like when she's sleeping or whatever and uh, get her blood. That's that's just a theory. I have no idea if that's what's going to happen. but I mean, we'll see. Yeah. But you could very well be right. And <clears throat> originally, I didn't think that. I just thought, like, oh, good for her. And then you brought that up, and I was like, yeah, that makes more sense. I actually think Matt Murdock is going to be a somewhat love interest for her. In the comics, they dated. In yeah. the comics, she dated everybody. I'm Samantha. I sleep with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Not this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not us, right, bud? (laughs) If you know, you know. If you know, you know. And when life gives you lemons, you say, fuck the lemons and bail. Yeah. Uh, I once saw the man beat a guy with a starfish. That's ridiculous. That man was me. (laughs) Um, Also, we do get a little bit of Pug, who is another one of the attorneys in the episode. He's so lovable and dorky and just, like, kind of a frat bro, but, like, in a lovable way. Um, what's his what's his actual connection from the comics? Cause... Well, it's kind of in, the, in the comics, the reason Pug works for the law firm is because he got rescued by Spider-Man. And after the events leading into whatever, where people, like, started hating... Spider-Man, Peter Parker, uh, oh, he advocate he advocated for uh, Spider-Man uh, because he was like, "Hey, man, like I need to become an attorney so I can like he's the reason Spider-Man's the reason Pug became an attorney to help superheroes because Spider-Man saved Pug." Yeah, sorry. I and the actor that has played Pug has been very public about advocating for you know Spider-Man to show up. Spider-Man mm-hmm. was supposed to show up in this show, but because of either, like, scheduling Sony. or... We all know it's Ooh. actually Sony, but they haven't confirmed it. But because of Sony, uh, he wasn't able to be a part of the show. At the wedding, though, Jen being Jen and having to, you know, walk down the aisle with a decrepit chihuahua and... They just, her friend is just like so about the connections. Like, Titania's at the wedding because Titania's dating like the nerdiest, least popular, least attractive groomsmen, literally just to get an invite to this wedding because Jen is going to be there. Mm-hmm. She's, her, uh, Jen's friend is just like stoked because Titania's there. She just wants the recognition and to be known is kind of like the, the vibe that I'm getting off of her friend. Um, but because Titania is there and Jen is just being ridiculed and just like put in awkward situations. I mean, like we said, we understand the whole no, she Hulk thing, but Titania takes advantage of that and is there basically to fight just provoking the yeah. shit out of her. It's it's pretty funny. Yeah, because Jen's drunk because she's in human form. Mm-hmm. Titania just like sucker punches her. Jen is oh, yeah. trying yeah. trying to Hulk out, but she's drunk. Well, like Titania thinks that she can like throw down with the Hulk. Yeah. Which in the first episode we know that she cannot. Yeah. Uh, and so she is like begging. She's like hitting. Jen throwing her across the patio, like, you know, know, show me Hulk or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And Jen's fucking hammered, so she's, like, trying. And she's kind of like kind of like Infinity War when Bruce is like, come on, Hulk, what are you doing? Like, smacking himself, and Hulk's like, no. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's kind of what's happening. She's like, I'm trying. And she'll, like, start turning green, and she's like, (laughs) and start laughing. And she's like, I can't do it. (laughs) It's pretty funny. But then she break a cage and she get this. (laughs) (laughs) 
and the fight that goes down <laughs> is both entertaining uh, because it's a fun fight scene, but also it's just ridiculous. And uh, <laughs> throws Titania across the dance floor, spilling a bunch of drinks along the way. Titania gets up and is like, oh, now y- there she is. Like, I'm ready to fight. And she slips on the wet floor and just knocks all of her teeth out. And she goes, my veneers. <laughs> she is, uh, reminds me very much of, and I think it's probably intentional, uh, Kim Kardashian. I don't think Kardashian was the original intention, just mocking just over-the-top influencers. Well, but also, oh, yeah, okay, I was going to say, but also, like, selling, like, the makeup products and shit like that. Like, oh, yeah. That's Kardashian. I mean, maybe not Kim Kardashian. Just the family as a whole. Just all of the tra- Kardashians. <laughs> I don't know. I see what you I tried. To, I tried to come up with a cool thing. It didn't work. But uh, she slips and falls and knocks out her teeth mm. and then gets mad at everyone, like, videoing her. That was Karen. She Karens. She does Karen. Yeah. I'll sue you. Yeah. You think you're cool with your thousand followers and smacks the guy's phone out of his hand? Yeah. Yeah. And she runs, like, scream, like, out of the room like this. <laughs> like what? <laughs> scream? No. no. How does she run? No. Like this. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> it wasn't Scream, it's the parody, the scary movie. Anna Ferris. Oh, a uh, scary movie. When, when she yeah. finds out that uh, Billy or whatever is the killer, and she's like, ah, ah, yeah. <laughs> making fun of Neff Gamble's uh, very over the top reaction to thinking Billy is the killer. Anyways, yeah. hi. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then that's kind of where, like, the wedding ends. I mean, she's as She-Hulk. The bride comes in, Jen's friend, and is like, what is going on? She's clearly hammered. And Jen's like, I know I promised I wouldn't, but she started it. And then the bride is like, oh, my God, She-Hulk, is that my wedding? Like, yeah. solidifying the point that she just wanted recognition. Yeah. She kind of like motorboats Jen. Well, that's because Jen's like a foot and a half taller. Yeah. I would motorboat her. What? Green giant. What? Sorry, Mom. <laughs> uh, and then... Kind of as the... I almost fully did it. I stopped myself. I almost been spawned it just now. And just did it for wedding crashers, but I stopped myself. New motorboat and son of a bitch. And then you did it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't, because he, like, makes, like, a noise. And she... yeah. <laughs> I did not do it. We went you that far. It. I had to. <laughs> uh, but kind of like we were saying at the at the start of the segment, you know, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of a deeper plot. Uh, it's not an end credit scene, but it's towards... The, it's at the end of the episode. We find out that there's a new syringe as well that should be able to penetrate she hulk skin we don't see any faces just some dialogue you know lab coats yeah yeah i think that that new syringe because you know wakanda has opened their borders giving resources and stuff like that i think that that might be vibranium yeah go yeah i didn't even think about that i also think that well, you already know what I think. I think that guy, I think he's the bad news. I think he is. I think it's going to cover both both sides. You know, it's going to, it's kind of like the last ditch effort, but now there's this new syringe as well. We don't know for sure. And there's no end credit scene. No end credit scene, no Daredevil, no plot. Enjoy. There's three more episodes left, so there's time for a plot to thicken, if you will. It's got a little bit of time. Yeah. Three episodes. They're not they're not long episodes, so Yeah, they're only thirty minute episodes. I think a lot of it 
a lot of the show has just been more about She-Hulk's duality instead of actually like pushing things forward. I think that Phase 4 has been setting up new characters, not necessarily setting up a plot. I think that that's going to come towards the end of Phase 4 with, you know, having Kang in there and stuff like that. So, oh, there's the puppy. He's here? Oh. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Jubilee. Jubilee. Hey, what are you doing? Come here. Come say hi. Come say hi to people. This is why oh. you should be watching us on YouTube or on Spotify Come video. Here. Say hi. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come say hi. Come on. Hey, you do fest. Come here. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Up, up, up. Oh, Jesus Christ. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, maybe uh, not. <laughs> it might be during uh, our next sponsor segment uh, where we're talking about Crybaby Craig. So continue watching and listening to learn more about Crybaby Craig's. It's a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes on practically anything. Uh, we'll be right back with you to talk about House of the Dragon. Hey, you nerds. Do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those, our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. Okay, friends, we are going to talk about House of the Dragon, now streaming on HBO Max. This is episode six, seven? Six, six as well, yeah. Six, yeah. Um, before we get started, spoiler alert, as always, uh, yes. ignore my dog in the background. Uh, <laughs> she is a baby still, and she's crazy. Uh, Did you give her a squeaker toy? I didn't yes, mean did. to. I gave her a toy. Uh, <laughs> well, if you guys hear squeaking, that's what it is. It's not Jake just bouncing up and down on his favorite toy. It's a butt plug. <laughs> Sorry, Jake's mom. Hey. Anyways, uh, spoiler alert, and uh, yeah, I mean, this episode was, uh, this, so far, for me, personally, this is my favorite episode, so far. So far? So far. Should I say so far one more time? If you want. So far. Yeah, so, it it's up there for me. I mean, my favorite episode was when Damon doesn't speak a single word and just annihilates all the crab people. That was cool. Um. But this was a very good episode. We do get a new cast right mm. off the bat. Because um, yeah. this takes place about 10 years later. So Alicent and Rhaenyra uh, have been recast. Lenor and Lena Valyrian have both been recast. I think that's about it. Yeah, just the old people. But we also get, the same. We get their the children, the next generation. Mm -hmm. um, so Rainier's children, Allison's kids are now, you know, a teenager and 10 years old. So they're also no longer babies, clearly. Yeah. Um, but this episode kind of mirrors the first episode in a lot of ways. It's kind of like a new premiere. You yeah. Know, it's mid season. Um, literally starts almost the same way only this time it's near giving birth instead of her mother um only it doesn't go the same she actually births the child doesn't die um, which is like a nice callback to the first episode because in the first episode Rhaenyra's mom tells Rhaenyra someday you'll be sitting in that very same birthing chair and Rhaenyra's like no <laughs> and then yeah hey <laughs> <laughs> puppy mischief um but yeah this is Rhaenyra's third child now um she already has two 
Uh, this one ends up getting named <laughs> Joffrey. You might remember Joffrey yeah. from Game of Thrones. He was a royal twat. Yeah. Um, but this Joffrey is named after uh, Laenor's, uh lover, love interest that uh, was murdered at the end of last week's episode. Um, and Rhaenyra catches the name because she was about to name him and Lenora's like, this is Joffrey. And she's like, the fuck it is. Yeah, not happy about it. Yeah. But uh, immediately, oh yeah, go for it. I was just going to say there is a really, the, kind of a cool scene, even though I've already expressed to you that I think that as an adult, Rhaenyra is kind of a not great so far. Hopefully yeah. she'll redeem herself for the scooter. Uh, but <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, there's a part with a uh, queen, which is her uh, ex best friend, Alicent, uh, demands to see the baby immediately. And uh, I don't know, you want to call him like a nurse or whatever is like, I'll like take a midwife. Yeah. Yeah. A mid- yeah. I'll take the baby and, Rhaenyra, fresh after, I mean, literally seconds after pushing this baby as out, like, no, I'll take the baby. And they're like, you should really stay in bed. And she's like, yes, I should. Yeah. <laughs> and then she walks her baby, newborn baby, uh, to meet. Yeah, like across step. the huh? rock keep, like literally. Yeah. <clears throat> Before she even leaves the room, like she's already standing, starting to walk, has to stop because, as the afterbirth every comes mother out. in the world knows, there's the afterbirth, yeah. Mm. But she continues marching. There's a trail of like bloody footprints uh, and more afterbirth that just gets like tracked across the castle. Basically, she's doing it to prove a point because she mm. knows why the queen is doing this because all of her kids have dark brown hair which is very not targaryen of them mm-hmm. and mm. even uh what's his name uh lenor lenor also has white hair so it's like white hair white hair one of these things <laughs> just doesn't belong here <laughs> But uh, takes the baby. The queen is very passive-aggressive. She definitely grew up in the Midwest. Um, <laughs> even makes a comment to uh, Lenor being like, keep trying. Eventually one of, the, one of these kids will probably look like you. Yeah. Like, she knows that they're not his. I don't think she knows that it's because he has no interest in women. But I don't know why I emphasize that so aggressively. Um, but it was very prominent from the last episode. But I think that's... she. I don't think Allison knows that. She just knows that they're not his kids. You just get bit by your puppy? Oh, yeah. Kind of hurt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, she's such a butthead. Uh, we do get to see Sir Kristen. Uh Rhaenyra's ex-lover uh, definitely does not like Rhaenyra anymore. He completely flipped the script um, and is completely devoted to Alicent. He even calls Rhaenyra the C-word. Um, dun, 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 dun. Big, big con. <laughs> I'm fine with saying it. I don't. I know some people find that word very offensive, and I'm, I'm sorry. So sorry. I'm sorry. It, yeah. What? I'm going to throw her in her kennel. She is flipping out in here. I'm so sorry. All right, everyone. Sorry about that. Uh, I guess puppies are just big old jerks. Right, Jake? She's an asshole, for <laughs> sure. An asshole, yo, yo, yo. Yeah, because I'm an asshole, yo, yo. Uh, yeah. But so back to House of the Dragon. We kind of learned very early on that we got hints at it last last week last episode but Alicent is kind of giving off Cersei vibes uh, mm. from the Game of Thrones show mm. but 
Yeah, it's that is what's going on. Um, yeah, she's she's definitely kind of like control. There's even a a scene in the episode where because she's kind of like controlling the king. Yeah. She's well, he's very geriatric. Yeah, I mean, he is turning into the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. it's And there's even a scene where uh, hit the hand of the king basically is like, no, I'm not going to do it anymore. And we'll, we'll get into that. Sorry. Yeah. But the, he, the king even says, I can't even take a, take a shit or a piss without her following me around. And it's because she is like, in everything that he does, she's trying to manipulate every little thing that he does. And so there's like a scene where the hand of the king is like, can we have a moment? And she basically takes like a step back and like crosses her arms or whatever. And is like, nope, not leaving. And yeah. also there was uh, another part because to try and like make the peace. Oh, R- yeah. Oh, Rhaenyra yeah. Yeah, tries yeah. to betroth her oldest with their daughter and King Viserys is like, this is a great idea. It's a great way to like bury the hatchet, you know, reunite our, our houses mm-hmm. or the division of the house. Cause they're the same house. Sweet home, Alabama. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Allison is like, you can do what you want with our kids when I am cold and in the ground. Mm-hmm. Like basically, like no, you may be king, but you don't make the decisions anymore. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she's super not great, and her oldest Aegon the Second is also not the greatest. And there's a very cringy scene. He's just <laughs> jerking it out of a window. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, slapping the ham. And, uh, uh, wait, well, the one-eyed snake. Yeah. And, uh, we're watching it and my girlfriend's just like, I didn't realize we were watching the boys. Because <laughs> if you've seen the boys, Homelander does the same thing. But yeah. yeah. Anyways, it was very funny. <laughs> uh, and. It was very funny. <laughs> but it, no, it's super, it's like, a, like you said, it's very cringy because he like, his, Allison, his mom walks in the room and he like. Is like, oh shit, I'm wanking. And he like sits on the ground butt naked and she like sits down next to him and starts like touching his chest and his face and like it was creepy. You also see her like standing behind him for a second, like watching. Yeah. And then she like gets his attention like right before he blows. Mm-hmm. So like she just like edged her son. Which is so fucking creepy. Yeah, it's gross. Uh, Mom, if you made it this far into the episode, do not Google what edging is. Thank you. Google it, Tracy. Google it. Oh, I said your mom's name. It's That's Tracy. fine. It's Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> also Google... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Rhymes with Shmumaki. No. <laughs> she doesn't know about that one time in college where I filmed that thing. What? Just kidding. That never happened. Were you the recipient? Or did it? No. <laughs> I feel like you were. I was unnamed man number five. Were you a German goo girl? Stop. Aegon the second is a dick, though. Pun intended. Uh, but he's bullying his younger brother and his cousins. And it's not great, but uh, Sir Kristen, Kristone, ex-lover of brown hair number one, instigates a fight with the kids and then instigates a fight with uh, Sir Harwin, uh, who is the baby daddy. All but confirmed. Renera's baby daddy. Yeah. Yeah. They all have brown hair. He's always around them. Shows he... them affection, protects them. 
Yeah. He's the dad. He's he the dad. is the father. <laughs> Maury, Maury, Maury. <laughs> But Sir Criston basically eggs him on for protecting the kids and says, you know, that kind of devotion only comes from, you know, like a brother, maybe a cousin, or a father. And Sir Harwood just lays Sir Criston out, just decks him. Very gently onto the ground. To make another brown-haired baby. <laughs> no, he knocks knocks his ass out it's it's hilarious because maybe we liked sir Kristen at some point he's a twat now oh just a total dick yeah, yeah. he's an asshole for Holy sure old. um <laughs> that's twice i got to make that reference before you uh, <laughs> but yeah just beat sir Kristen down uh <laughs> And Sir Kristen just takes it. And is like, yeah, that's what I thought. Basically, he did this to incite a reaction out of Sir Harwin because he is trying to help Allison prove it. That he's the father that of Sir Harwin is. Yeah. Renero's kids, yeah. Uh, yeah. He gets sent off to Harrenhal. Banished! Banished uh, to, to Harrenhal. Which his father, the hand, the new hand of the king, uh, I did not write his name down. It's they're both from the strong family. That's their last name or their family name. They're not all that strong. <laughs> <laughs> At least against fire, they're not. Oh, oh, because they and locked doors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even with the dad on the side of the lock using a crowbar and Sir Harwin throwing his body into the door could not break it down. So how strong were they? They burn alive at Heron Hall. Turns out that Laris, uh, who we have seen in previous episodes, he's the one with the cane. He's kind of the new little finger. Mm -hmm. uh, was behind their demise because it, which is his the, own father and brother. Yeah. 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 Eliminates the father of Rhaenyra's children, the hand of the king, basically helping Allison bring her father back. Mm -hmm. It's it's very political. As was Game of Thrones, so Yeah, it's it's in keeping with it. Um but we also get to see Damon. Uh, are they're not in Dorne? Uh, they're oh, I forgot the name of the town. Uh, we saw it in Game of Thrones. It's across the sea. It's there was in Dorne. No, because they talk about the Martells. Oh, uh, Martells of Dorne. Dorne. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I remember them saying Dorne in that yeah. episode, but yeah. yeah. I don't remember the name of that town. I don't know where either. Uh, they're there. Yeah. Uh, and they and the people there are basically like, we want you to stay, and fight for us. You've got they, dragons. Yeah. And Dame is like, yeah, sure. And his wife is like, yeah. His new wife, which is Lena, uh, Lanier, uh, Lenor's, and uh, Lord Corliss's daughter the one that was originally proposed to the little the kid king. she's not so little anymore she's an adult not, yeah. but at the time she was a little kid right when she was supposed to marry Viserys right yeah. and she's pregnant they have two kids together and it's this is another time where it mirrors because she's giving birth to the third child. Trying to. Trying to, yeah. And it is one of those situations where another C-section... Who does number two work for? What? Doesn't really happen, though. No? no? I mean, it was an Austin Powers reference, but I didn't get the... the oh, it was a poop. Yeah. yeah. 
She's she's trying to birth the child. It's stuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> but can't give birth. She had already mentioned to to Damon that if she's going to die, she wants to die a dragon rider's death. And so she gets up from her birthing station because uh, she's kind of like hunched over the bed. Well, they tell Damon that the baby's not coming out. Yeah. And the only way to get the baby out is to kill her. Yeah, and cut it out. And yeah. even then the baby might not live. And he's like, I've witnessed this before. But he doesn't like make the decision. He's just kind of like, huh. And uh, <laughs> Lena gets up. She goes out onto the beach where her dragon is. And seppukus, basically. Uh, via telling her dragon to kill her. Yeah. Uh, Jakaris? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the, dra- and the dragon's like, no, not doing that. Yeah. She's like, no, do it. And the dragon's like, no, I'm not doing that. I love and you. And she's like, yeah, do it. And the Go dragon's on, get. like, get out of here. Fitty. Go on, get. You know what that actress muscle want? That actress muscle want. Tree fitty. <laughs> you went funny. I was referencing Black Fang. Yeah. Uh, she basically tries to Black Fang herself. The dragon's like... White, White, Fang. White Fang. White Fang. I'm sorry. Black Fang is about horses. I'm sorry. Uh, and the dragon's like, nah, fam. You're bae. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I had to. Uh, and finally, the dragon... Burns her alive with the baby still inside. They both die. uh, And she got her dragon rider's death. Very somber. And that's basically where the episode ends. We're setting up for more conflict. I guess Rhaenyra and Lenor and their kids and his new lover and a bunch of knights. They leave King's Landing to go to Dragonstone. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. We just see them like walking across the the bridge to Dragonstone. Yeah. And the episode ends. It's setting up a lot of tension. And I'm ready for it. <clears throat> this is the show is a powder keg. It's about to explode. And I'm loving this show. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the show is going to at the end of the season uh go even further into the future. Uh, and I think, it, at least my theory is that uh, the show will really be based around the kids. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the civil war within the family that Rhaenyra and Allison mm-hmm. start. Yeah. Because in the preview for the next episode, we do see Rhaenyra standing next to Damon. Mm-hmm. So we know that that's where the allegiance lies. It's been teased all season, just like Damon teased Rhaenyra in the brothel. It's it's coming, and maybe or, eventually, or Damon is it does. pun intended? Yeah. <laughs> eventually, Damon probably will. Uh, <laughs> he does, if you know their lore. Um, it's, but that's what's coming next. That time, no pun intended. It's about to get real for the last few episodes. I'm excited for it. Yeah? Are you like... No. Not coming. (laughs) All right. Uh, Jake, let's go ahead and start closing out this episode. Well, before we do, uh, I've got a couple things we want to cover. So this week for honorable mentions... What do you have, Jake? Uh, fall. I watched, uh, I was very hungover yesterday. Uh, <laughs> and I watched, <laughs> and uh, it was my cousin Sarah's birthday, and we, you know, we we go, we go a little hard. Um, so yesterday it was rough. I was up riding the couch pretty much all day, and I watched a movie that I didn't think I was going to like. Um, it's called Fall. I don't know the two main girls' names in the movie. 
I didn't look it up. They're not familiar to me. But Jeffrey Dean Morgan is in it. Very little amount. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that the movie is a go. Yeah, give it a shot. I liked it more than I thought I was going to. Uh, it these girls climb a very tall like satellite tower or something like that, and the ladder basically breaks off, and they're stuck up there. Uh, there's a very interesting uh, twist that I did not see coming. Uh, and yeah, it was good. I'm going to sell that one. Watch it. It was a good watch. The acting's subpar, but the uh, the movie itself is interesting. So give it a shot. How for, about you? For me, I really didn't see any movies uh, this week. There's just been a lot to watch for, I mean, The Rings of Power, She-Hulk, House of the Dragon, and kind of in between that, I have, I finally decided to start watching Modern Family, and love Modern Family. I love it. Uh, it's not nerdy at all. I mean, some of the characters are pretty nerdy. My, they make my, comments and stuff the... like that. Phil does magician stuff. Yeah. It's pretty nerdy. It's called magic. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, but magic not, not real. Not in the the sense of what we talk about. It's not nerdy. Um, but it's a very enjoyable show. I'm loving it. Most people, a lot of people, have already seen the show. So I know I'm very late to the party, but I'm I'm really liking it. So. That's kind of what I I watched this week. Um, it's kind of cool. Phil Phil is in what's his name in real life? Um, I have no idea. I did not. Look oh, I normally know. I would know it. Uh, it. The guy, the dad from Modern Family, is uh, Liv Tyler's boyfriend in Incredible Hulk. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. And the mom in Modern Family is from Happy Gilmore. Yes, she is. Yeah. And also, like, Sofia Vergara. Um, and if you're as old as me, you know that Sam Neill, or not Sam Neill, Jesus Christ, uh, O'Neill, what is uh, something O'Neill? Ed O'Neill uh, is the dad from. Oh, God, what is the name of the show? Love and marriage. Love and it's called love and marriage. No, it's not. Or married with kids. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved that show when I was a kid. Anyways. Yeah. Very enjoyable show. Um, we do have a bit of an announcement. Uh, because we always tell you to give us your money. Uh, we are dropping Patreon as a subscription uh, to the podcast. We haven't found a replacement yet. We're in the process of looking through different options. There's just a lot of very unsettling allegations against Patreon that we do not want to be a part of. Involving underage females. Yeah. Yeah. Because Patreon does not care to vet the content that's on there. Uh, And dropped their cyber security team when they brought this issue to their attention. They're more concerned with making money than they are about keeping people safe. Yeah. And they literally fired their entire staff for tech, for the staff telling them, Hey, there's there's an issue with underage females on here and we should probably like make that not okay. And And they were like that they allowed it was because the people posting it, were verified 18 year olds basically a bunch of moms were doing uh yeah. kitty only fans and it's yeah. super gross and we don't want anything to do with it so if you were considering joining our patreon hold out uh yeah. we will we will have a replacement for it in the near future yeah. it's gross we don't want to be any part of it so hey yeah. johnny um, suck yeah we will We'll update you when that comes, and Patreon can suck a bag of dicks, yep. which I'm sure that they do as long as they're underage and their dads say it's okay. I shouldn't have said that, but nope, fuck, it's all right. fuck it's, Patreon. Yeah. 
yeah, this Patreon's is disgusting. Garbage. We don't want anything to do with them anymore. So that's no longer a thing. Yeah. Outside of that, if you do want to support us, buy some of our merch. Uh, the link is in the bio. It's a great way to support us, especially in this interim where our monthly subscriptions are now gone. Um, got a lot of cool stuff. Uh, we'll also have that gallery up for Battle of the Sketches that we were talking about at the start of the show. That's the way to support us and uh-huh, other uh-huh, artists like at this point in time. Outside of that, we've got some cool stuff coming up. We'll have some guests on next week and for the next few weeks after that. I mean, we love you guys. Thank you for sticking around. We're excited for what the future holds. And uh, this has been the All Things Nerd Podcast.